I teach French, and before that I taught high school French, so I have a certain passion for the, the discipline. And I embarked upon teaching it online, um, first as an experiment, and uh, then it was a very successful course, and I'm satisfied with uh, the performance of my students. So um, I've, been, I've been revising the course all along for the past eight years, for uh, just like face-to-face uh, -face teaching, um, activities work for some groups, not for others. But in broad strokes, my students engage in cultural discussions. They engage in um, text-generated, uh, textbook-generated uh, um, exercises for pronunciation and for listening skills and for reading skills. What does an effective learning activity look like in my course? Um, it is really sort of a synergy between the, um, what we're discussing, uh, so a particular unit could uh, be on uh, clothing, could be on cooking, and um, so there's a certain synergy between the discussion threads, uh, between the vocabulary that students are, are using, and as well as uh, some of the grammatical uh, things that they're learning at the time. So how to tell a story, how to describe what you're eating, how to, um, how to order in a restaurant, and so uh, we try to make it as, um, as practical as possible because I'm in, a, in an online course. Uh, my expectation is that all of the learners will be adult learners, and they usually are. Um, and really, they want to leave my course with a certain facility in speaking French and communicating. So the speaking and listening skills usually rise to uh, uh, the top in terms of importance. So. Um, Teaching a foreign language, I'm able to focus on uh, to focus on skills that students want to learn. Um, so, as an example, too, the, the writing skill not so important for students. So, traditionally, we uh, most of us probably remember writing things all the time in our foreign language class and being graded on our writing for the most part. So, in my course, uh, I try to um, I allow my students to choose between either writing their exercises or speaking their exercises. And I provide feedback to them either way. In my opinion, as an, as an instructor, when someone uh, has the feeling that they can use what they're about to learn, uh, where there's relevance for them, um, uh, I think we, we come closer to effectiveness and uh, students engage at a much higher level when we are uh, able to connect what we're teaching them to their own lives. So developing a sense of trust and connection between students, a, a, a community of, uh, of learners, is uh, a very conscious effort in an online classroom. In some classrooms, it can be organic. In a face-to-face -face classroom, it can be organic. The students can be friends. Uh, they could recognize each other. And, uh, in an online classroom, there needs to be discussion forums uh, that are aimed directly at bringing the students together. Um, I like to bring them together with, uh, at, at the beginning of a class and have them gather around what their initial thoughts are about uh, my discipline, French. So uh, my uh, initial discussions are usually uh, ones uh, one called Meet, Meet Your Classmates, where uh, it's very simple self-introduction, and I ask them to talk a little bit about their hobbies and their interests. And uh, then I have another discussion about what are your first impressions are of the French, and hold nothing back, because um, that usually gets them uh, thinking about the French and uh, the, uh, you know, impo one important part of, of this stage of the, uh, of the course is my participation in the discussion. I uh, assume a very neutral stance and a very uh, sort of, I try to be a gracious host and accommodate all my students um, at, the, at the very beginning of, uh, of the course. I also um, I usually check into my course two, three times a day during the first two or three weeks because, so that students know that I'll be attentive to their concerns. And that usually helps establish um, some trust.
The technologies that I use in my foreign language classroom are, uh, I have tried a lot of different ones, and um, I need a, have always needed an efficient audio tool. So I've gone through several different iterations of, of that particular tool. Currently, I use one called Audio Boom. And Audio Boom enables students to uh, create audio files on the fly. They can, crea they can create them with their computers. Uh, they can also create them with their phones. And a lot of my students like the phone app for Audio Boom. That has been very successful. I also use uh, something called VoiceThread, uh, which is a, an audio and video environment in which students collaborate with each other. So in the context of my foreign language course, they're able to actually have discussions, very public discussions, with each other. Another technology that I've used that I do want to bring up uh, because it's very real world is uh, Yahoo Messenger. Okay, I, I bring them to Yahoo France. And because uh, uh, most are very familiar with Yahoo and that type of uh, online environment, they're able to navigate Yahoo France very quickly. And I get them into chat, and um, what they get a little bit of a taste of uh, how uh, French, just like English, is compressed for the keyboard and for the chat environment. And they usually like that very much. Thank you.